Nothing in life is certain but death and taxes. Unless you're Charles Koch, then you're already dead inside and you dodge most taxes. Anyway, Republicans and their populist Trojan horse are trying to pass tax reforms that will funnel even more money to the super rich. Still, they swear up and down that if the rich are allowed to get richer, eventually one day the poor will be less poor. And if that nonsense makes sense to you, it won't after this. After an unsuccessful attempt to repeal Obamacare, Republicans are still looking for ways to dunk on the poor. Luckily, there's healthcare's less sexy brother, the Kevin Dillon of legislation, tax reform. And Trump hopes it will be passed by the end of the year. We are giving them a big, beautiful Christmas present in the form of a tremendous tax cut. Aw, and to think, the coal industry just wanted it to be a lump of coal. But for most of us, this tax reform bill is the exact same thing because this bill most benefits the richest of Americans, those who brunch on weekdays and use summer as a verb. It slashes corporate taxes by 15%, eventually eliminates the estate tax, and would also add $1.5 trillion to the deficit, something the deficit hawks like Paul Ryan are 100% against, without fail, except for when it makes his donors a lot of money. And while the tax burden on some of America's wealthiest will be lowered, the poorest Americans will actually have their taxes raised. Sure, it'll be just like Christmas, if the only way to give Christmas gifts were to rewrap things your kids own that you made disappear back in September. Just what I always wanted! My cat back! <coughs> of course, this is not the final tax plan, and passing it won't be easy, especially since Republicans decided to use it to give personhood to fertilize embryos by saying taxpayers could make contributions to the Zygotes College Savings Programs, which is conniving and insane, but at least the GOP is showing some awareness that people can't afford college in just one lifetime. The right is defending their tax plan in some bizarre ways. Take Sarah Huckabee Sanders, who in order to explain how taxes work, told this condescending, inane, almost four minute long parable to reporters. Suppose that every day 10 people, for our purposes, we'll say reporters, go out for beer, and the bill for all 10 comes to $100. The first four, the poorest, would pay nothing. The fifth would pay $1. The, the tenth, six, the richest, would pay, would pay $59. So until one day, decided. the bar owner threw them a curveball. I'm going to reduce the cost of your daily beer by $20. Pay $2 instead of $3, a 33% saving. And the tenth now the paid $49 now paid instead of $59. I only got a dollar out of the $20 saving, declared the sixth reporter. And she pointed to the tenth reporter. He got 10. The nine reporters yelled at the tenth and made him feel bad. Made him feel bad. Feel bad. Feel bad. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how our tax system works. What? That's the moral? Don't get mad at rich people or they'll be sad and leave? Why'd you need all that math if your fake answer to the equation was just rich fragility? Seems a lot faster to just put up a photo of Scrooge McDuck crying into a Fabergé egg. Paying your taxes is nothing like splitting a bar tab. If it were, do you really want us to compete with beer prices in Bangladesh? By the way, we have a far better story to describe the economy at the end of this video. Okay, so Cruz says high taxes are immoral, and Sarah says they'll make rich people feel sad. What other justifications does the right make for tax cuts for people who clearly don't need them? People will change their behavior, businesses will change their behavior if taxes change. These companies that pay no taxes, the reason they pay no taxes is they cut all these gimmicks, tricks, and dodges that they use because tax rates are so high. But if the tax rates were lower, they wouldn't use them and they pay their taxes fair and square. That's right. Apparently, once corporations are given a giant tax break, they'll stop breaking the law in order to evade them, which is the most sociopathic reasoning ever. That's like saying, if only women's hotel rooms didn't have locks, Harvey Weinstein wouldn't have to force his way in, would he? The GOP wants us to believe corporations aren't about their bottom lines, they're merely unrealized Mother Teresas, stymied by unfair tax rates. They aren't tax dodgers, they're tax conscientious objectors. And once corporations and the super rich are unburdened by taxes, they'll invest in the economy and create growth and revenue. You cut taxes for corporations, you cut taxes for wealthy investors, and they invested in the economy. If you really want to stimulate the economy, you got to give people that make money a tax cut. Republicans are so convinced about the genius of their tax plan, watch how this overeager representative introduced it to the public. We are going to make our economy boom for the average family of four. <laughs> oh, Kathy. 
thing. You practice so hard in the mirror for that applause break. You'll get them next time when you announce cuts to Social Security, Tiger. Here's the thing about tax reform and wealth that Republicans hope we miss. When you look at the actual numbers, economic growth doesn't equal prosperity for the average American. Even though in the last 35 years, GDP in the U.S. has gone up by 154%, median household income went up by only 16%. Meanwhile, corporate profits went up by 182%, and oh look, income for the top 1% went up by 190%. And what do Republicans think the problem is? Bar graphs bar graphs. That theory of trickle-down economics is more fairy tale than theory. After decades of hawking it, it hasn't actually proven to be true. It's kind of like your friend's theory that any woman who isn't into him is automatically a lesbian. It's not true, but he tells himself it so he can keep wearing sweatpants in bars. Because there's no evidence that tax cuts for the rich equals economic growth. But there is evidence that reducing taxes for the wealthiest leads to income inequality. Also, side note, Nothing good trickles down. Urine trickles down. Blood trickles down. That mysterious liquid coming through your ceiling trickles down. If you want to lie to people, don't say wealth trickles down. Say it flows down. And tax breaks for the powerful are necessary. For you are their redeemer. And it is by your hand. You will rise from the ashes of this world. That's how you do it, <laughs> duh. So if you insist on explaining the Republicans' tax plan and the American economy using a dumb drinking analogy like Sarah Huckabee Sanders, then an accurate one might go something like this. One bar owner employs nine people at $7.25 an hour. One day, the workers ask if the owner might let them have a beer, since they can't afford to buy one. Of course, exclaimed the owner, but not now, he said. Just keep working and waiting. Eventually, beer will trickle down off one of your customer's chins, and you'll get a taste too. In fact, I'm so sure this will happen, he declared. I'm lowering the starting wage in anticipation of these great perks. So the nine workers kept working and waiting for a droplet of beer to fall. Months passed and nothing fell, until finally the bar was bought out by a Chipotle with robot cashiers, leaving all nine workers and the owner out on their asses. And that is how the trickle-down economy works. So what other myths on taxes and wealth have you seen floating out there? Let us know in the comments below and subscribe to Newsbroke for more of these amazingly mind-blowing explanations of tax reform. Mm. Also, as we were finishing up this episode, the Paradise Papers just dropped, and they revealed that the wealthiest have been able to hide about $10 trillion in untaxed wealth abroad. <laughs> so that's fun.